In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the slope of a line that is tangent to any curve. Go ahead and draw a graph, pretty big on your paper, um, of f of x versus x. And then we're just going to arbitrarily draw a positive sloping line up. Pick two points on that graph, and to the best of your ability, draw a straight line between them. This is called a secant line. Uh, it cuts the curve. Uh, I think it shares the same Latin root like saccar or something uh, that the word scissors and scythe has. So this is a secant line and it cuts the curve. We're going to find the slope of that secant line. So the slope of the secant line, uh, we could call it m for slope, subscript secant, is going to be the rise over the run, or in this case, delta, the change in our function f of x over delta x, the change in our variables on the bottom. If I was going to represent these two things, um, you know, I'd have some, do some dotted lines here, some value here that would represent my delta x, and then of course some sort of rise here that would represent the change in the function. The secant line um, is what we're going to use to try and understand a method of getting closer and closer to a tangent line. The idea is really simple. You keep one spot, the back spot, which we call x and f of x. You keep that constant. Then you take this second point and you move it closer and closer and closer to your original value, which means that you are making delta x smaller and smaller and smaller. By doing that, you're going to get a secant line, a new secant line, um, that is getting closer and closer and closer to the same slope as what a tangent line would be at that original point x. Let me show you a simulation of uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, so here I have a curve, um, and the green line represents my secant. The purple is my tangent. Now the secant um, starts at the exact same spot that the, the tangent line starts. And as I move this second point of the secant line up or down, you'll see that my change in x is either getting bigger or smaller. Well, when this change in x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, when also when the change in the function, right, we would call this delta y or delta f, as that gets smaller and smaller and smaller, then the slope of the secant line gets closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the green line gets closer to the slope of the purple line. If we could just somehow shrink delta x and delta f, these changes, so small that they're almost infinitely small, almost zero, then we would find that the slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the tangent line at that point. So there's actually a way for us to represent this mathematically. Um, it's a clever thing. Let's, let's talk about it. So what we can do is we can define the second value, um, w you know, our second point. <laughs> if we had, if this was point P, then maybe we would call this point Q. I don't know. We can define that second value, the point Q. Um, instead of saying like x1 and x2, like this would be x1, and then this would be x2, we're going to do something weird. We're going to call it x plus delta x, which is true. It is your initial x value plus the change in x. Then if our original function is our first y value, we think of f of x as like y1, we would call the second point instead of y2, we would call it f of x plus delta x, which is true. Whatever the function at x plus delta x, that, that would be your y value at that point. And if we write the change in f of x over the change in delta x, we would get delta f, I'm sorry, not delta, we are making the delta, f of x plus delta x, okay, that's like my y2, minus my y1, which is just f of x, okay, so that's the change in the function. On the bottom, we would have like x2 minus x1, or x plus delta x minus x. Well, already I see that the x and the minus x, they go away, so all of this is just over delta x, it stays the same. All right, this is sort of a goofy way of expressing the slope um, of the secant line. 
and it is a very special function that is called the difference quotient. Um, it was, I believe, proposed by Isaac Newton and is often called the uh, Newton quotient or Newton's quotient. Um, and what we're going to do is sort of conceptually apply our idea that we talked about before, where if we can somehow bring this second point Q closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to the original point P, thereby shrinking delta x, we are going to get a slope of a tangent line. So the slope of the tangent line, maybe we should write this out so we kind of like logically understand what we're saying. The slope of the tangent line, we'll call that m tan, will be equal to the slope of the secant line when delta x is so small that it's zero. Now, Isaac Newton was brave enough to actually call it zero. Um, but later mathematicians thought that that was sort of shaky philosophical grounds. Um, and eventually, um, I think it was Bertrand Russell in the late 1900s, early 1900s, he decided that we needed to have a formal process um, of describing what we mean when x gets so close that it's basically zero. Uh, and he called it the limiting process. So you would say that x is basically zero when the limit of delta x approaches zero. That's how you'd say that. If you've worked with limits, great. If not, we're basically just going to say that delta x is zero. Uh, you might already see we can't say delta x is zero yet because it's on the bottom of the function, and if you divide by zero, the world breaks. So, okay, the slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the secant line when the delta x is zero. Another way of thinking about that is saying when the change in x, or delta, is so small that it is infinitely small. Um, or like the smallest possible change in x ever. Like x1 is maybe it's 0 and x2 is like 0 0.0000001. So it's so small that it's infinitely small. Um, this is what a man named Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz liked to say, uh, who lived at the same time of, as Isaac Newton in the 1600s. Um, and rather than just saying delta x is 0, he would say it's so small that it's infinitely small, and he would use a different letter to represent it. Um, he would use a little d. So instead of saying delta f of x and delta x, we would say little d f of x and little dx. These are called um, differentials or infinitesimals because they're infinitely small. Okay, let's let's stop, pause, summarize. Here we go. The slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the secant line when delta x is so small that it's basically zero. We can say that one of two ways. The limit of delta x approaches zero, or this infinitely small change in f over the infinitely small change in x. So this infinitely small change in f over the infinitely small change in x, this is something that we're going to call the derivative. And we say that it is equal to the limit of delta x as it approaches zero of the slope of the secant, which the difference quotient is what we're going to use for the slope of the secant. So f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. Oops, sorry. This is what we call the derivative because we are going to eventually get an equation that tells us how to find the slope of a tangent line at any point by going through a rather tedious deriving process. So this is called the derivative. Um, and to make things even weirder, Isaac Newton preferred not to say little d f of x, little dx. Isaac Newton liked to say um, f, you'd put a dot over the x. And then Joseph Lagrange is a guy who started putting a little line in front of it, calls it a prime. You'll learn about all these things in your calculus classes. Um, but we're going to stick with this differential notation for right now, the little d's, the infinitely small changes. OK, so the infinitesimals. Moving on. Let's do an example so that all of this nonsense makes sense. Use the difference quotient to find the slope of a line that is tangent to f of x equals 3x squared plus 2 at x equals 2. All right, so let's sketch this bad boy. My f of x. f of x. If I were to sketch this thing, um, it would start at 2. 
it would have an initial slope of zero, and then it would have a positive A term, so it's smiley faces. So it starts at two, initial steepness of zero, and it's smiley faces. Okay, great, awesome. Um, and I want to find a, s let's see, the slope of a line that is tangent at x equals two. So at x equals two, I want to find what is the slope of this line. Okay, so here's how we proceed. First of all, we're going to say we're finding the derivative, okay, or the infinitely small change in the function of the infinitely small change in x. And then we state what we mean in terms of limits. Well, what that means is I'm going to take the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the slope of the secant, written in this incredibly annoying way that we don't quite understand why we're doing yet. Awesome. Now, let's actually fill out the slope of the secant. So we still have to write limit delta x approaches 0, which is super annoying, and that's what I hate about limits. And so what I would do here is I, I basically just take x plus delta x and plug it in to this function. So this would give me 3x plus delta x, the whole thing squared, plus 2. Okay, so that's the first function, minus, and then I just plug in x to this. So 3x squared plus 2. Awesome. Divide that whole thing by delta x. And eventually I'm going to get to a place where I can just say, you know what, delta x is 0. The limit of delta x approaches 0, so we're going to plug in 0. But I can't do that right now because delta x is on the bottom, and if I divide by 0, the universe breaks. So I have to simplify. Woo. So I rewrite the limit because I hate myself. Um, and then I start to simplify what's on top. Okay, so right away, if I do 3x plus delta x squared, this is going to give me x squared plus x delta x plus x delta x plus delta x squared, or 3 times x squared plus 2x delta x plus delta x squared, um, and then all of that plus 2. Then I'm going to have negative 3x squared plus 2. Awesome. And then this whole thing is divided by delta x. Well, there's some more simplifying that I can do. Um, like I need to distribute that 3 in. So rewrite limit delta x approaches 0. 3x uh, squared plus 6x delta x plus 3 delta x squared plus 2. The 3 does not distribute to the 2. Okay, and then minus 3x squared. I'm going to distribute this negative also. So minus 3x squared minus 2 all over delta x. Okay, do some more simplifying. Is there anything on top that is going to go away? Well, uh, yeah. I can see that the 3x squared gets canceled. And what else? The 2 gets canceled. Okay, great. So now I'm left with the limit as delta x approaches 0, which means eventually I'm going to plug 0 in for delta x. 6x delta x plus 3, oh, yeah, 3 delta x squared. And that's it. Okay. And I divide that whole thing by delta x. This is kind of annoying. I'm going to move this delta x up a little bit so it's not in the way. Oh, I see some simplifying that I can do. Do you see it? Yeah, I can now get rid of delta x in each term. So I've got the limit as delta x approaches 0 of 6x plus 3 delta x, and that's it. And now I think to myself, OK, what would happen if I said that delta x is 0 now? It's so small that it actually is 0. Well, it would disappear, because 3 times 0 is just 0. And I can mathematically comprehend that. I can do that. So now I use the limit, and it's gone, and I'm left with 6x, which tells me that my infinitely small change in the function over the infinitely small change in x, you can think of that as like this tiny, tiny, tiny triangle right here with df of x and dx, uh, has a slope of 6x. Now you'll notice this is an equation. And what I can use this equation to do is find the slope at any point on the original function of, the, of a tangent line at any point on the original function. 
So let's go back to the problem, what it wants me to find. I want to find the slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. Okay, well, so all I have to do is say, all right, the derivative of f equals, and then we can plug in 2. This might be a good time to call it, um, we can call it the prime if you want. F prime of 2 equals 6 times 2, or 12. So I know the slope here is 12. Well, what if I want to find the slope at, oh, I don't know, 4 seconds? Well, the slope, again, I'm using the prime. This is Lagrange's way of saying little d f of x over little dx. If I wanted to find it at 4, then I would do 6 times 4, which is 20. So now I know the slope at that point. So this is a much quicker way uh, of finding the slope of a line at a point on a curving function, um, or at least a more exact way than trying to draw a tangent line by hand and then measure the slope of that tangent line. It's tedious because you have to go through all of this deriving process um, to get at our derivative, but it is exact. It's very, very exact. Um, and I, I don't think I noted, said this before, but sometimes we like to say that this is the derivative, which I knew I said that. Um, and when we are doing this process of going through all this stuff, we like to say that we are differentiating um, because we are using the difference quotient and then rearranging it using algebra to a place where we could see what would happen when delta x is really so small that it's actually zero. And if you're kind of like, wait a minute, why do we care that delta x is zero? Let's think again about what this whole idea means. We're saying that if you have a secant line, remember we went through that whole process of writing the slope of the secant with the difference quotient. If we reduce delta x so that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it is basically zero, then what we are getting is a slope using the difference quotient that is equal to the slope of a line that is tangent at a point. Okay, so that's what we're using the differentiating process to do. That's what this whole thing has been about. We took the, um, this is the slope of the secant line, and then we reworked it for a specific equation, and we got to this place where we got delta x somewhere off to the side. And we said, what would happen if delta x was 0? Well, this equation would give me 6x. This equation, the derivative, it now will let me find the slope to my original function, the tangent lines. It's the slope of tangent lines to my original function at any point. It's super long, and it's super boring, and it takes a lot of work, and there's a lot of calculating, but that's why they call it calculus. And pro tip, Isaac Newton, all those original guys who invented calculus, they just hired a bunch of guys to do all this calculating for them. Um, now, you might be thinking, is there an easier way to do this? Well, we'll talk about that later. For now, the video is done. Congratulations.